Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Dungan and company find themselves deep inside of the Druid Grove. After systematically isolating and taking down everyone in Kaga's headquarters, we find ourselves in Zevlor's room. If we are planning an attack here on the Grove, it makes sense to take down the leaders of this organization first, and then leave them scrambling when the attack actually <laughs> comes their way. That's exactly what we're trying to do. This person is isolated from Zevlor because we lured them over with a song. Now, I had no intention of designing Dungan for this purpose, but he really does have the perfect kit for it. Minor Illusion lets him bring enemies over from the areas they're supposed to be in, and then all we have to do is play some music, and we can keep them there indefinitely. It's really, really fun, actually. Dungan lines up with his first crossbow shots of the, the video for 19 damage. Goodness gracious. Those archery gloves are really showing just how valuable they are. Asturian moves in with a dagger hit of his own. It does not connect, so we are going to bonus action disengage to move back over to the side. Lazel swung already. Let's see if we can get a radiating orb above this target. Let's get to make it so she has an even harder time hitting Lazel here, protecting that precious, precious HP. Well, one target already dead. And we find the iron cell key. <laughs> Are you the jailer? Because I already messed up that storyline. Now, all that remains in this room is Zevlor. He does have a crossbow of his own. Let's see if he can use it. 45% chance to hit. We connect for, what was that? 10 damage, something like that. And then we're just going to line of sight for the rest of our turn. So he has to come to us. Now, I am not new to Larian games. We were big fans of Divinity Original Sin 2. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of that game here on this YouTube channel. And we even streamed even more. Wait, what the fuck was that? Hellish rebuke, you fucking devil. How dare you? Uh, where I was going with this is we have a legendary character called Beast the Savage. And Beast the Savage was called that because he killed every single enemy in the game. He absolutely was a savage through and through. Uh, now, when I say enemy, I also mean every single friendly NPC, man, woman, and child, too. It was not good. Not a good sight. A lot of people have been asking if I'm planning on doing a Beast the Savage run of Baldur's Gate. And I've often wondered logistically, how would you do that? How would you make it so a single character could actually come out on a lot of the, come out on top on a lot of these combat encounters? And genuinely, I think Dungan has the right setup for it. You lure them to the side so you have the advantage that you need. And then once the target's isolated, you try to take them down. Zevlor proving to be very difficult to deal with, dodging a lot of our attacks. He is level four, so I guess I do kind of expect a little bit of that. Uh, let's approach with Lazel. She already fired her shot. Perhaps I should have moved in for a melee attack instead. But because she's standing there, that enables our sneak attack from Astarian, which connects for 16 damage. Uh, then with the rest of his turn, he's just going to hang out back here. Lazel is fine. Shadowheart is not. She has been hit hard. Let's use one of our level two spells to try to make up some of that damage. We heal for 18. That is perfect. And we're just going to line of sight with the rest of our turn. Dungan is back up again. He fires off his hand crossbows, connecting for 10 damage. Swift and Zevlor, the leader of the tieflings, falls. On his body, we do see the Hellrider's Pride. When you heal another creature, it gains resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. This can be incredibly strong if you couple that with the spell Aid, which we just got, but do not have prepared on our Shadow Heart. So Aid is gonna give us temporary HP for the entire day, but if she has these gloves on and then does an AOE heal, it means we're going to be resistant to basically all types of physical damage. Really cool combination there. Well, we're off to a great start. The leader of the tieflings is down. I am just going to loot all of their belongings and sell all of these to the goblins. Oh my God, this vendor is peeing on the wall. Ugh. 
This is who I've aligned myself with. I got stuff. Come on. You got coin. We've made our way back towards the start of the game. We're just a little north, heading northeast from where the Nautiloid crashed on that beach. In fact, this is right where we rescued Lazelle from her terrible devil tiefling captors. We're making our way over to this building because I am going to want to respec a few things. And before the gigantic battle, we might as well put our best foot forward. For instance, my Starion's been very roguish, but the build I have planned for him is a little more ragey. In order to respec him, we have to rescue someone from deep in this you facility. Not another step, hear me? Hey, boss, you look a little veiny. Up here. I've never approached from this way. This will be interesting. What's this then? Trying to creep around us and loot the crypt? Not happening. Or is it the ship you're after? Don't matter either way. It's ours. All of it. Well, it's not very welcoming, is it? You know that ship? I think it's an invasion force. You guys better get out of here while you still can. That's a 12 with guidance. We can make, you know what? Let's use friends too. Because if it works, I don't think this guy's going to stick around. Friends is going to give us advantage. Let's go ahead and cast it. We got a natty 20. Yeah, you guys better get out of here, dude. I saw some tentacle monsters running out of that thing. Well, uh, in that case, come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Uh, what? Second mouse gets the cheese. No? Nobody's getting any damn cheese. Now move it. Jeez, that was actually easier than normal. I know I've shown this in every playthrough, but you never know when it's someone's first time watching Baldur's Gate. If you wanted to break in in a, in a new interesting way that's a little off the books, you can shoot this, this weight here that then cracks the floor and lets you enter this place in another direction. There's actually like six entrances into this different facility, depending on the path that you take. I think it's super well done. Can I talk my way in again? Why do you give a book? Everything all right out there? Um, yes. It's me. Let me in. <laughs> Why does that only need a five? Does he not know what his friends sound like? We roll the dice and get a 23. Be shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key. Yes, find the key. Find the key. We're in, boys. We're in. Oh, of course it's combat right away. You're dead. He is surprised, though, so that means we can't... Really? Surprise round doesn't give me advantage for, for sneak attack? I kind of feel like it should. Uh, we'll just go ahead and swing then with a Starion, who connects for six damage with his dagger. Uh, we will then fire off our crossbow shot. 65% chance to hit. One of them does. And it hits hard for 10 damage. Shadowheart now approaches. Swings that maze of hers for another five. And Lazel walks up. 65% chance to land. It does. And just like that, the guard is taken down. We'll take his key and his belongings. Uh, I will come back and loot this room. There's a decent amount of food in here, as well as a Fane painting on the wall. I'm taking that with me. Come on, Fane. Now, are these doors locked? They are, but luckily for us, the lever is on our side. Oh, no conversation at all. I was just about to ask what happens if I approach as a lone bard. I guess nothing. We'll fire off our crossbow shots on Mari, the lone adventurer in the middle of the room. Uh, with the rest of my turn, I'll go ahead and fall How back. You get past I could have pulled the lever there to make it so she doesn't have line of sight. She's actually running back to gather reinforcements from the next room. The looting party now knows that we are here. However, they have chosen to enter combat at a very good spot for me. Astarian on his turn moves up and casts Firebolt on the oil barrel on the left side. That is going to do quite a lot of damage to these guys. We are going to bonus action sneak and not end his turn, or excuse me, dash, not end his turn just yet. We're just going to fall back 
to the lever. Now, on Shadowheart's turn, we're going to approach, cast a Sacred Flame on Barton. It does not connect, and she's going to line of sight. Lazelle, on her turn, walks up to the top of the steps, and we are going to fire off yet another ranged attack on Barton. He misses. I guess she misses her attack on him. He dodged. Uh, with the remainder of our turn. Oh, it's a full action to pull the lever? Shit. You don't have a mage hand, huh? Um, does the door just close? <laughs> so pulling the lever is a full action, but closing the door isn't. That's very interesting. We see another dash coming forward. He opens the door, I guess because it's not locked. It's just closed that he's able to reach in here. Another dash from the end of the hallway sends their barbarian forward. Hasid has entered the room. And he's very close to a lot of our party members. If I had Mage Hand, we could use Mage Hand to close that. But I'm a little lacking in that department, too. Um, okay, I'm counting on Astarian here to land his shit. He does have Attack of Opportunity. That also means he's threatened, doesn't it? Well, shit. Well, shit. Let's take Lazelle out. We'll make sure she's using her melee weapon. And we are going to do a pushing attack on the Barbarian. Hopefully sending him into the previous room. No, just connecting for a little bit of damage. Um, all right. That'll end her turn. We're going to bonus action disengage on Astari. This is going to allow him to move away without attack of opportunity. Then we will try to finish off the archer with a dagger to his neck. And we were successful. Now, on Dungan's turn, crossbow bolts at the bottom of the stairs. One of them connects for six damage. The other is a critical miss. Now, let's see if we can land the sacred flame. Or should we just close the door? Oh, uh, there's only one more enemy. I don't think it's that important. Uh, we'll try to swing. That's our highest chance. Four damage is enough. And Shadowheart moves out of the entrance. Ice Knife being cast on Lazel for 18 damage. 16 damage. Uh, I thought there was a bit more AoE with Ice Knife. And for some reason, that also closed the door. Oh, fine. If we're playing fancy games, I'll show you fancy. Bonus action, crossbow shot. Hits the lever. Opens up the door again. Main action, crossbow shot. Kills the target. You're trying to one-up Dungan? Hell no! Not to... Dungan fell on the ice. Dungan fell on the ice. Dungan, get up. <laughs> Dungan. <laughs> if you travel all the way to the southern end of this room behind the statue, if your eyes don't deceive you, there is a lever that shows up. That lever opens up another locked door. That locked door is right here in the hallway. Now we can proceed deeper this way into this massive fortress. I am going to come back through and loot all the food and stuff. I'm just speeding through for editing purposes. Lazelle is going to use her second wind to heal up, hopefully, a considerable amount of those health points there. And then a potion just to finish that Great. off. I think Dungan's also going to drink She's a potion a here as well. We just want everybody to be full HP if possible. Now, these doors are locked, and I don't believe I found a key to open these. These are the large doors on the northern side. With the guidance from Shadowheart and Jack of All Trades, we end up getting a 14 on our roll, and the doors pop open. Moving ahead. As we enter, you may start to notice some entombed scribe bodies Long all scribes. around the room. No sign of a struggle. Very important for us that we loot these bodies first. It's going to make something much easier here in just a few moments. We can also start to think about where we want our party to stand. Uh, for me, I'm going to put Shadowheart at the top of the stairs, Lazel at the base of the stairs here. Kassarian over in the back corner, and Dungan will continue to loot the rest of the room. Uh, Lazel does need to take some of the belongings off of some of the nearby bodies. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have put together what's about to happen already, but if we move to the northern wall yet again, we may notice a button. Also, does any did anyone pass the religion check? I 
hope I got all of them. If those ones were real in the doorway, I definitely didn't get them. They're in that archway over there. Yeah, they stand up in the cutscene all over this. There's none there. Larian, fix it. <laughs> so, by pushing the button, we have awoken all of the undead in this room. I normally head straight for this fight, but I was a little scared on honor mode. Uh, I've seen Holly do this fight on Tactician. And these motherfuckers have a few tricks up their sleeve that they did not have in our previous playthroughs. And I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Unfortunately, Shadowheart is really slow on the draw in the turn order this time around. Dungan's going to try to move up to the high ground so he can kill off the scribe on the side. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now we'll end our turn right there. Lazel's going to start swinging on the Entombed Warrior next to her, but misses her attack. The warrior then throws stone that he found on the ground at her, and the silencing aura goes down. This is not normal for these skeletons to have. This is a damn dirty trick. Uh, we are going to try to approach on Shadowheart to swing, breaking the concentration of the silence. She's then going to move back towards the kind of center of the room here. At least that's what I'm aiming for. However, another silence bubble goes down. These casters have one trick up their sleeve. Make that two. Ray of Frost hitting Lazel from the side for five more damage. She's at a third of her HP now. Uh, we will, on a star end, just shoot the Entombed Scribe in the back of the head. Oh, unfortunately missing, even with a high chance of landing. Dungan might be able to get a shot off. I'm actually afraid he won't be able to see over the rails here. Uh, that is the case. Dungan, <laughs> no. He does have it enlarged, but it's a full action, so I don't think we're going to be doing that. We're going to dash with the rest of his turn and move him to the side of Astarian. Lazelle on her turn, swings at the warrior again, connecting for 17 damage. As the warrior then throws another rock, Lazelle is hurting a lot right now. As we move back to Shadowheart, she still cannot cast inside of a new silencing dome. She swings for eight damage on her undead friend and connects. With her bonus action, she's going to try to get some healing words down to Lazelle to keep her strong and moving. This will be our final conflict of the day. As a fog cloud goes down and blinds both of our archers, another silencing bubble goes up around Shadowheart. Wow, they are pulling out all the stops here. Uh, Astarian's going to step out of the cloud and fire off a shot with his bow, connecting with the target and well, ending the fog. The Dungan then approaches. Is that really who cast that? I don't have great options here. We're going to move up and if anyone's in range, I'll try. Oh, just barely. The Entombed Scribe in the corner takes 18 damage and falls over. Uh, we see Lazel in her turn. I would like to go for a tripping melee attack here if I can onto the Entombed Warrior. 55% chance to hit. We connect for 24 damage and he just falls down animated no longer. Shadowheart's going to leave the Silencing Dome and cast a Sacred Flame. Not only breaking the silence, but causing a radiating orb to spawn above this enemy. We are going to bonus action dash on Astarian, who gets as close as possible to his target before firing off another range shot, connecting for five damage this time. Dungan moves to the side of his vampire friend and ends the encounter. Okay, the only person who took any damage was Lazel. All right, all right. Those silencing areas, if you can't break those concentrations, I mean, I guess it really depends on your party makeup as well, can completely cripple your ability to fight back. We did very, very well there. Hide one sarcophagus. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus indeed. Who do you think is on the top of the sarcophagus? Any guesses? Let's go ahead and open it. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Coin. I wonder what it's worth. A soul coin there. Wait. Here lies the guardian of tombs. Through knowledge comes atonement. I've never seen this not open. 
Here lies the guardian of tombs. What? With knowledge comes atonement. Wh Where's our crusty friend? Huh. Well, I tried interacting on every character we have. I also ran into the room with every character we have. This book is far lighter than it should be with such a massive log. Interesting. Book in the corner looks suspicious. We're going to check it with some arcana. Search for an arcane rune to sabotage. Uh, we will take guidance for that. I'm not particularly magical. Oh, guidance was just enough. What is this As book the about? Opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scrawl. You have a sense these are names, a list. But of what? Religion check. We should be pretty good at this. We need a 10. We roll a... Oh, natty one. Natty one. I will use inspiration on this. We had a few sitting around. I mean, why not? Rolls up to a 21 this time. These are the names of gods. Once lost, but now restored after the second sundering. The last three names in this book sit close together, but are so devastated by the scroll as to be unreadable. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn. Silently recorded by this book. Yet, Maybe the person who it. normally reads the book isn't here. Maybe this is like a rest and then come back kind of situation. I've never encountered this before. I'm kind of perplexed. However, if we looked on the Let's southern side of this area, does. there is one more room that we can explore. And I'm going to have Dungan do it very quickly. We're going to gather Mary, this place is trapped. the stuff inside of the sarcophagus here. And then as the game enters turn-based mode, we are going to sprint this direction and forever leave that damn room behind. We'll go ahead and turn off turn-based mode. I'll never forget, this is one of the first areas that they showed off in the like press releases for this game. They were actually showing off the demonstration of this at PAX East. And I remember watching this room and the traps and the turn-based mode. It was so fucking cool. Well, let's go to sleep. Maybe that'll bring our friend back. Maybe our friend's already at camp. That's a possibility, right? Hey, <laughs> Withers, what are you doing? Ah. Uh another thy name has been recorded i shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services great uh, not to be rude who the fuck are you and how'd you get in my camp there are many answers to that question none are important oh okay all right um well, skeletons don't normally talk around me. Correct. Are you going to explain that any further, or am I just accepting that there's a dead man in my camp that I've never met before? No. All right. Well, what kind of services do you offer? A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. That's, uh, that's great. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Make what an awkward introduction. What the heck? Cam. Well, I'm going to spend 100 of our hard-earned gold to respec our Astarian. He's been a rogue thus far in combat. However, he's feeling a little angry. Here is new stat, 16 strength, 14 dexterity, 16 constitu constitution. Those are the main ones. Uh, if we go ahead and respec him, we can now level up and get even stronger. Barbarian level two allows me 
to take some reckless attack actions. We also have danger sense leveled up. As we hit level three, we're going to be able to pick some interesting subclasses. Now we are going to be the wild heart. However, for the bestial heart that we are taking, Astarian is going to be a tiger. While raging, you can use Tiger's Bloodlust, and your jump distance is increased by 15 feet. Tiger's Bloodlust allows us to lash out with our weapon on up to three enemies at once and make them bleed. Seems very fitting for our vampire, doesn't it? We are going to need to make one or two changes. For instance, the Everburn Blade will now burn in his hands. You, you could have your old weapon back. Oh, shit, I think I sold it. Next, we're gonna be respecking Shadowheart. She is going to remain a cleric. However, Trickery Domain is out and the light is in. Our cantrips should not need to change, although you could argue that Produce Flame could be pretty all right. In fact, I am arguing that. We're going to add Produce Flame into our arsenal here. Now, as a Light Domain Cleric, we gain access to the ability of Light, as well as Burning Hands and Fairy Fire. Our subclass feature, Shield Yourself with Divine Light. Use your reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker, possibly causing them to miss their attack. Her stats are going to go through some changes here as well. We're going with 16 Dexterity, 16 Wisdom, and 14 Constitution. I have a really big problem with how late Shadowheart normally goes in the turn order, and pumping that dexterity is going to make a big difference. As she levels up, she gains Radiance of Dawn. The sun's divine power dispels any magical darkness in an area. Also does a buttload of damage around her. And this is her channel divinity action, just like we had the turn undead before, which we didn't end up using. This is just a big source of damage around us. And as we hit level three, we also gain access to Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray from our Light Domain background. Every time you level up or go to sleep, the inventory of vendors gets reset. So earlier I sold everything we had and completely bought out this guy's inventory. Now, wouldn't you know, we have a little more stuff and he has a little more coin. You can take advantage of this later in the game if you're looking for specific elixirs or, you know, various arrows of some kind off of a vendor. When your whole party levels up, you have four levels up that you can cycle through. You just go to a vendor, level up one character, buy out whatever it is you're looking for in their inventory, and then level up another one to refresh their inventory to buy out more of it. I would do that if we started to see, for instance, arrows of many targets start to show up, but so far his inventory is pretty clean. We're just using him to sell off everything, basically. Well, I think all that's left to do now is for our party to get some much needed rest. I believe the invasion of the Druid Grove can begin once we get some sleep. Oh, that's not the only thing that's beginning. The air is heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Mm. I'm gonna press my fingers to my mouth. Can I still feel my face? Your finger traces the arc of your lips. Wetness, sweat, blood, and saliva mixed into one viscous liquid. What are you doing with that? Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly, your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others. Then, myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty. A touch of disgust. Mm, I'm going to explore Lazel's mind even more. If she really is threatening me, I have to get some kind of answers out of her head. Uh, we only needed two. <laughs> we got a 17. Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. 
Lazel Spear grips you. Not fear of death, but fear of insignificance. The great warrior Lazel, a failure to her kind. She will wield no silver sword, ride no red dragon. Forever unknown to the great Lich Queen Vlacketh. Be strong. You'll survive this. You'll please your queen. I will not let the Geich take me. I will earn Vlacketh's honor. I will wait. But know this. I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. Well, well. We... No! <laughs> no! Who's there? These hands seem familiar. I came just in time. <gasps> You are transforming. Is that Kalark Olark, the world's strongest and most handsome Githyanki? What is he doing here? Oh, he's so handsome. Ah, oh, I've heard your voice before, Kalark. Yes, you have. I saved you before. Oh. I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a mind flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. Thank you, Clark. Yes, take the hand. I was worried about the future, but I know I'm safe now with you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. Yeah, I'll listen with all of my ears I could possibly listen with. There is great potential within you. Yes! It comes from that parasite. Yes! The instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Yes! Nurture it. I agree! I will keep it from consuming you. But for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. What is that, Kalark? A fight for the fate of Faerun. A fight we are losing. For now. You can change that. But only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. Bro, that's so cool. You'll feel better. I promise. Do I feel better? I'm not sure. Check back tomorrow and we take the fight to the Druid Grove. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you again very soon.